All right, welcome back to the channel. So this morning, I got a little thing that we are gonna look at for y'all. We are not working on a Fox body. This is a Mercury Comet video, Ford Maverick video, okay? So, Comet Maverick door hinge, Fox body. So the Fox bodies have lightweight um, plates offered for inside the uh, right here where the hinge bolts up that you can change out the Maverick does not so I was always curious if Ford would have changed um, that or if they would have kept the same bolt pattern so I had a spare hinge at the house I've got a Fox body that's broke down here at the shop so I decided to take this opportunity bring this in and hopefully share this with everybody else and see what our options are as um, Maverick guys because you know um, Fox bodies also have aftermarket door hinges that you can get for like fiberglass doors, all kinds of stuff. So let's see if this bolts up. So there's our bolt holes for our Fox body. Okay. And we're, we're looking at these screw holes inside here. This is where your, this plate moves around in there. So we're looking at them holes. Look at that. That's a win. We got that piece right there that you can't. Let's see here. We'll do it on this one. Look at that. Ford used the same pattern for their hinges on Mustangs and Mavericks. And the hinge looks like it even would fit possibly a door on this car <sighs> amazing piece of information to have there all right let's talk bolts for a second so uh, I was gonna order NASA bolts uh, which are where the they are the exact the shank a lot of y'all probably know is the exact size as the hole in your four link bracket okay so there's no play in them like this or like this like they're they're pretty much exact size and then the width of them the shank part is the exact length so that when your uh, nut tightens up to it you know there's just a little bit of thread on the end of it um, I think normally they're fine thread too not coarse thread um, for the for the bolts for this car to be able to do this car it was going to be like I think like a hundred and some dollars. It was something ridiculous. It was almost like $200. And so I said, I'm just not doing it. So what I'm doing is just like everybody else probably is I'm using the grade eight bolts. Uh, they're really close fit. Like they're, they're pretty decently tight. But the first time I did this, I didn't know no better. And I used ones like this. Okay. And so then what I've learned is that when this goes through your four link bracket, what happens is one side of the bolt. Okay the shank will oh the washer's hitting on that hole back here the shank will be through that side so your shank will be through that side so that side can't move but then what happens is this side since it doesn't have a shank this side ends up having more play so that's what wallers out your holes even though this side technically can waller out too but at least it has a smooth shank on it which fills in the gap because as you can see your shank is a little wider uh, you know, then your threads. Well, the shank's actually as wide as the outermost point pretty much of the thread. And what happens is that when this is rattling around in a hole, the bracket ends up squishing the threads, which makes one side of the bolt as wide as the inner threads right there. So it's basically sitting there doing like this all the time, wiggling in there, pounding everything around. So I'm using these longer bolts this time. Uh, this is the redneck way. This is not the high tech correct way, but this is better than this stuff that I had the first time where I had uh, washers or spacers in here. I mean, I even, dude, I even have plastic spacers. It's terrible. Our theory on this was at least it went in the hole and it shouldn't have enough force to beat this plastic out. But the more I've learned and 
you know, progress. I realized that that's an absolute joke. Like, that's a laughing stock of everything. So, um, we're doing these long bolts. It looks uh, hideous in some spots, you know, like this. They're going to be hanging out. That one's a little long. What I'll probably do is I will probably run these all the way, uh, the nuts all the way up on the vise uh, at the house. And then I'll probably take a cutoff wheel, cut it about right here, and then taper the edges, you know, and get it where the nut threads on and off smoothly. And then I will put a spacer between here and here so that, you know, there's no, you don't have to run it way down and so it tightens up. If you, these uppers, I may be able to step down, honestly, to the next size. I'm gonna go back to the hardware store. I think these are three and a half inch bolts. Um, the ones I bought, uh, like overall, like the shank of them, I think is like three, no, the whole bolt's three and a half. So if I step down to a three, that's gonna shorten your shank and your bolt. So that might be enough where um, it doesn't it doesn't hang out so bad. So I'm gonna try to do that again this weekend and change change them out to uh, see if the shorter ones fit a little better. Uh, but for right now, you know the shank's all the way all the way out to here. So this is what we're gonna do just to get it just to get it home, and then we'll have to go back through here and paint everything. All right. So this is what we have going on with the steering rack. Um, first off, I absolutely hate this steering rack. This steering rack come with the universal. Mustang 2 kit I bought whenever I did this uh, um, Mustang 2 kit. So the cross member, it come with cross members. It come with these lower tubular control arms, upper tubular control arms, and it come with spindles, these cheap ball joints. Um, it come with different tie rods. I've already changed the tie rods out to Heim joints. Uh, it did not come with the bump steer kit. I added that and I've trashed the original spindles and went with these spindles. I trashed the original brakes, went with these brakes. So the only thing left out of this kit is the steering rack, the part of the cradle, the upper control arms, the ball joints and lower control arms, everything else has been trashed, including the coilovers. The coilovers that come in the kit have been uh, there for sale. I haven't got rid of them, but I'm not using them because I switched to uh, the strange um, ones. So the one thing I hate about this steering rack is how they want this thing angled. So they send you these little pieces that you weld onto, um, you weld onto here and that angles it like that so it points the shaft like up like look okay if we're at a 90 you can see right there the shaft it literally points it up like that okay whereas it really needs to go back kind of like that okay because that puts it in a crazy bind up here see if I can zoom in and you can see how close it is to our MMR uh, piece which we went over in another video on how to uh, we showed that mic uh, changing that angle of that MMR Piece. So what we want to do, let's see if you can, there you go, you can see the shaft back there, okay? So we want to try to uh, straighten this out where it goes from here to more straight up here and get this bind out. Lay this thing basically down in here. Um, but we also have this thing really close to the pan. So when you turn it like this, that's going to put our bolt holes down even lower. So I'm not 100% sure what me and Mike are going to do yet on it and it's also going to drop our uh it no it shouldn't drop our arms actually they should stay the same because this tube should basically just rotate um and i want to get it a little better evenly clearanced on my pan so we're gonna mess with this unfortunately um because like i said you have to have this right before jason builds the headers you don't want to mess with this after the headers because then you know you're gonna have to build around the around the headers with the steering rack so we kind of want to do this um i wish it was in the budget to just buy another steering rack but right now i'm just not going to do it i guess i'm gonna try to just make this one work because there's really nothing wrong with this one but the plans are take these bolts out and then basically change it where the bolts are mounted some way like that if possible so basically all i'm gonna undo and this bushing is like literally already popped out that's how crappy it is you can see on this side how this one's in uh i'm gonna basically have to get a washer that's as big as this so that it holds the whole outside in but i'm gonna pull this out and uh just kind of mock it up and see what we're looking at all right so what we are going to do originally this bolt okay just like i showed you this bolt went through here it went through the steering rack like i showed you and then it bolted up inside up inside the tab like that it was it tilted the um steering at the wrong angle that showed you all that so now we now have, have a beautiful shot straight up to the steering nothing's in a bind i'm probably gonna have to change the oil lines or reroute them uh that's the, that's the common story here um, but what we're gonna do instead of cutting these tabs off 
and remaking all this crap um, is we lurked out, lucked out, Mike had his U-bolts. We're literally just gonna cut the end of the U-bolt off and he's just gonna lay a big weld all the way down both sides of this. So you'll just, and then we'll build a spacer real fast that would go here. That way the steering uh, rack just bolts straight onto the bottom. And then them pieces are still there. So technically if you ever wanted to go back to them pieces, you could just cut the U-bolt off and go right back to them. Um, you know, or you can use them for whatever you want to. But we're just trying to make this easy, fast. I know everybody on the channel is complaining wanting the car out to the track, so that's what we're doing. We're getting a little Turbo John on them right now. Uh, this is probably not Randy approved at all. <laughs> no, it's not Randy approved, Mike? No, it's not. But this is Turbo John approved? Yep. Um, I guarantee you Turbo John put his stamp on it. Um, and like Mike said, you don't really get much stronger than a U-bolt, so. He's gonna cut that, we're gonna weld that up, build a spacer, and then that steering's gonna be done. So I went ahead and took this piece, remember this is gonna go up top in the back of the four link and put a nut cert in it. So basically, this is gonna be the top, this black line right here is gonna be the top of the drive shaft safety loop. Uh, it's gonna get welded right there on that black line, so it's easier to do this now out of the car. That way we just have one pound mounting point since that's going to stick up why you know leave it empty you know that's going to be the center of the car if you need p-clamp or whatever you possibly need that's going to be perfect for you know attaching something to if you need it it's there it's done it'll get all painted black you won't see it uh you know just go all ahead right, and do so it. we are making some progress y'all mike is welding up the last little piece that goes in the cross member we he got the front welded all together i'll show you that um we're just coming through this. This is why I love working with Mike, man. So there's a lot of people out there that fab and stuff and they uh, don't work efficient or fast, I guess you can say. Um, I mean, there's some people out there that are just monsters at it. Uh, C CJ uh, race cars, for instance, monsters. Uh, but me and Mike work really good together, really fast, really efficient. Uh, we both are critical thinkers where we can figure stuff out really fast. So. I greatly enjoy working with Mike, but let me flip you around and show you what we got. All right, so he got the anti-roll bar tube welded in. We're just doing the tube for right now. Uh, the arms will sit right here, and then we will weld some tabs off of up there. I've got to move this brake line again. Um, but that way, you can take this shock mount out, and you can slide the tube out. So we're going to sleeve that out of the car, and then we'll slide that tube in, put the bushings in, put that together. So before the way it was done, is it was kind of stuck in the vehicle you couldn't get the inner tube out if it bent or twisted so now you'll be able to service that and take the tube out change the bushings and all that stuff um, up here on the steering rack he has all of that welded together the welds aren't beautiful because gravity pulls them uh, down and uh, doesn't work in your favor but the steering rack is absolutely amazing now in my opinion so i love the way that that is done because it's nice and simple now um, you know it's just easy so that's that's it went it went awesome you know it's nice and straight no complaints so we got that done the cars back at the house finally so the hardest part of cramming in and all the cramming and Bust and tail is over for this stage of it. So I know some of y'all are wondering if the thing is just going to be for looks or if it actually is ever going to go to the track. Look, there's um, no point in going to the track when you're not prepared. I know a lot of people do it. I know it's extremely popular in this sport to go to the track when you're not prepared, but there's no point. It's stupid. You're wasting fuel. We all know the cost of how much fuel is right now. You're wasting your time. Yeah, you get to hang out with your friends, but we enjoy building them too. So there's no point to throw something together and then have to undo all the wiring and everything, you know, in that area to make a change. So we're trying to get it right. That way, whenever I first start coming out, I, uh, you know, and, you know, actually making passes, then we're learning the car right the first time hopefully or or as the best of my ability because i'm new to all this so i'm going to be learning you know the car learning how to do things you know the whole nine yards so anyway um that's why we wanted to make these changes we want to make sure it gets right and i know a lot of y'all are just joking around but um sometimes sometimes i feel like people are sick of it and i hate just keep 
putting out the videos, but uh, this is the process of getting a car that's decent, that's not slapped together. Like y'all know there's a lot of cars out there just slapped together and um, I don't want mine to be like that. So um, it's back at the house. We ended up working, um, or I, Mike was a few hours less than me on the car. So I ended up doing um, 22 hours straight on the car, but out of them 22 hours, I slept six hours. So I did come home, slept six hours, woke right up, went right back to it. So walked in the door, showered, sleep up, uh, right back to it. So 22 hours to do what we did. Um, Mike only missed like three of them hours uh, on uh, this morning. So that's Friday morning. Um, besides that, he was there the whole time. So I owe Mike a huge, huge thank you as always. Mike, me and Mike's been uh, friends for forever and we try to do business together and try to hustle together, stuff like that, even though our businesses are completely separate legally. Um, so check out Mike's channel, Blanton Dynamics. He's still new to it. Uh, he's trying to find time to get everything rolling. He's trying to grow his subscribers and his watch hours. And uh, he puts out some mechanic videos that can help you if you have a problem. A lot of his are, a lot of his videos in the past so far has been like certain items that he's going over that he's doing. But uh, he will, he should be building a drag car eventually when he gets caught up on a couple things in life. Uh, he's talk, we're talking about doing a Mini Cooper, doing a tube chassis, LS swap, of course, because it's cheap. Mike's on a budget. Mike's a uh, cheap, cheap budget racer. Mike might be more of a budget racer than Turbo John because Mike will build and fab so much stuff that it will blow your mind, the stuff that that boy's uh, capable of fabbing. So now that the car is back home, the work is not done. Um, there's still a ton more messy work to do. Um, I'm gonna get in here tonight and start trying to sort some things out. Basically, me and Mike got everything welded together, got it all rough, but um, when I moved the rack on the front and we brought it down off the lift, one of the tires was like jacked way out because the rack got moved a little. So. Um, we, uh, I need to do an alignment on the front end and get that back decent where it'll just roll because right now it's kind of fighting itself. I put a halfway alignment, eyeballed it on the trailer to get it off the trailer because it was so bad. Um, like it was literally so bad it was like walking the car to one side, fighting with it. But uh, so I got it where I got it, was able to get it back in the garage, but I need to halfway put alignment on it. Uh, there's a few issues I want to sort through on the steering rack, the end joints I made. Uh, I think that was like early YouTube time uh, we did some videos on where I not actually I made them before I started YouTube but I have worked on them a couple times um, they're still not 100% where I want them to be at and they're not working exactly like I want so uh, I want to readdress that and my angles are just so bad like they're like this like I'll show you they're so bad because we went over in the previous video that the car was built on two inch drop spindles and now it's on regular height spindles so I'm probably gonna just go ahead and change spindles, man, because I just feel like it's really gonna mess me up with the toe uh, when the car comes up in the front, you know, the wheels towing in and out, whatever, that it's gonna, it's gonna really mess me up and hurt me. Um, I need to check it to see how much bump steering the car has. So that's another item that we need to go ahead and get serious about and check um, because the, the car is going to wiring, then it's going to headers, and then it's either going to TKM or suspension, probably TKM first. TKM, so it's running and driving, then it's going up to South Carolina to get the suspension set up and tuned. So before it goes to South Carolina, which could be as early as a month and a half, two months from now, um, because I think between the wiring and the headers, it's probably gonna be about a month, three weeks to four weeks on that, uh, total together, probably. Um, but before it goes to suspension setup, they're doing the whole car. So they're plotting it, scaling it, um, suggesting where we should move weight to or hang weight, um, doing alignment. I mean, he's doing the whole nine yards. I'm going to bring it to y'all. I'm going to tell you whose YouTube channel it is. Uh, I'm going to plug his channel so you can check him out because he's got a ton of information out there. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be really cool. So, and I'll take y'all along with my journey of that whole entire day. Uh, to doing it. I think it's like 800 to 1,000. I think I could be completely wrong, but I feel like I remember pricing it out at like 800 to 1,000 for a full day of scaling, plotting, weighing, corner weights, uh, shifting weights, suggestions, alignment, like chet setting your whole chassis up front to back. So I felt like it was a good deal because you're paying for somebody's knowledge. You're not paying for somebody to do it. So if you just needed somebody to do it, then you could get your buddy some beer down the road and a pizza and y'all halfway figure it out together. But I can do that. We could turn on the YouTube right up here, call Mike over, call somebody over and 
I'm perfectly capable of doing it right here in the garage myself. Uh, there's tons of videos on how to do it and everything. What I'm not capable of doing is getting the years of experience and knowledge without putting in the time. So if you're going to get knowledge, you either have to put in the time or buy the knowledge. That's the only two way to get in knowledge. Either read it, which is time, watch it, which is time, or go out and make mistakes, which is time, or you just go buy it. You just go buy the knowledge off somebody else that's already done, number one. So we're gonna buy the knowledge. Um, you know, I'm not one to cheap out 100%. I cheap out a lot of stuff, but a lot of it's, a lot of it's dumb stuff. Like y'all see me buying off eBay. Like it's not a big deal. When it's time to set the car up, I'm not wasting, like I said, fuel costs, time at tracking all that to play around with figuring out the suspension. So that's a little, uh, not my style, not what I want, not what I want to do. So um, I understand it'd be fun, but why would I do that when I could just have the whole car set up and go and have fun actually making it count. So, um, I'm gonna dive in here, the list is long right now. It's really long. Uh, one of the old lines is now hitting on the steering um, shaft. Uh, and it's not the steering shaft, the bolt that I just put through there is hitting on the old line. So I'm hoping I can just kind of fudge that, reroute that, put a set screw in it and call that good. But I mean, the steering shaft, as you've seen, is beautiful, beautiful. So the steering rack setup is now a hundred times better than it was at first. Uh, the ride height is beautiful. The clearance on the four link brackets from the concrete, beautiful. They're exactly what 10 Soldiers race car uh, wanted. I'm gonna double check them now that it's on the ground when I'm in there, but all of our math says that, you know, they were they were on the money within his his instructions and his, his specs. So uh, we still got one more bar to cut out the car to get some weight out. I never got that second bar out, just didn't have time. Uh, we got some cleaning up to do of the metal and then we have to completely figure out how we're gonna close in the back of this car now because none of the old stuff is going back in because I've completely changed it. So tonight I'm gonna just kind of wrap my head around some stuff and get in here and try to figure out how I want to box in this back area, um, you know, this time and try to get some of that done. And then we've got uh, painting to do. So everything that we did this weekend has to be painted. Uh, I'm just gonna brush that on, I'm not. I'm a painter, I'll do base coat clear coat one time, but when I make uh, modifications like this, I ain't got no time to be dealing with that base coat clear coat stuff. So I'm gonna paint it on. I'm not gonna spray paint it because spray paint oversprays all over everything if you don't mask it off. And then, I don't know, I get that Rust-Oleum stuff in a quart, I'll, I'll show you. Same stuff we use on Randy's cage, just not hammered. Um, I get it where it's just normal. I got it in flat black um, and we're just gonna brush out everything we did, you know, so that's, that's just what I like to do. So we're gonna, uh, and we gotta get the back of the car sealed up so we don't have to deal with burnout smoke and everything. So uh, old lines up front, we're gonna have to remake, reposition, or reorder the uh, coolant lines. So we gotta deal with that. In the last video I showed y'all that, or the video before last, um, they're hitting the Pro Charger belt, box in the back end, close it all in, do all the tin work. Um, paint it and then get this thing back together dude like get this thing ready to start making its journeys to other places so put the oil in it uh transmission y'all have to remember we talked about that before uh, beforehand me and mike didn't even get to do the transmission so after this thing comes back from wiring and headers we'll probably then take it back to the shop and put the transmission in it to clearance the mid plate um all of that kind of stuff unless we can squeeze it in beforehand which i don't see happening because it's supposed to go to wiring after father's day which is next weekend not this weekend but father's day is next weekend so it's supposed to go to wiring like after next weekend so we are really closing down on we're about to be shelling through some money so y'all hang in there because we are getting stupid close um but yeah i got a lot more work to do still so uh let's get at it and hats off to everybody that builds their car in the heat because man, working at the shop on this thing sucks. It makes you a lot more messy, a lot sloppier. It makes you wanna go faster to get out of there. And uh, you definitely ain't kicking off your shoes and putting on the slippers and taking your time. So I'm glad to be back home, glad to have the AC turned way down um, and glad to be able to uh, get back on working on this thing in the AC.